Uh, so, hello, I'm Andy Irving and I work at the British Library, but that doesn't matter because today I'm here to advocate hard for the International Image Interoperability Framework, which now is AV compatible. Uh, so, I assume that some of you will not be familiar with this uh, if you're not from the kind of galleries, libraries, archives and museum sector, so I will very briefly give an overview of uh, this, uh, which we usually pronounce as IIIF. And at its core, it's basically a model for presenting and annotating digital representations of objects. So things that exist in the real world that we want to digitize and make available over the internet, uh, with lots of other benefits as well. Um, but mostly, it's a community that develops shared API, so application programming interfaces, implements them in software, and exposes interoperable content. So we have a hard rule that every kind of spec uh, feature has to have at least two independent implementations, which is really nice, so we don't spend time kind of describing specification that doesn't go anywhere. It's got actual deliverables at the end. Uh, and it's also a global community. Uh, so this is an out-of-date slide, but kind of shows either adopters or people who contribute to IIIF in some way across the world. It's fair to say that that's focused around uh, the majority world, but is expanding into other areas, uh, and hopefully into some more after today. Uh, and so why IIIF AV? Well, uh, IIIF has been around now for almost a decade uh, and has done some really great things for making images uh, available through our community. Um, one of the huge benefits uh, for us is that you can share content without having to necessarily go and get a copy of it. Uh, using the web to distribute things and building on top of uh, open standards uh, allows us to kind of do things with minimum kind of interference and boilerplate. Uh, and we thought, wouldn't it be really great if we could describe complex audiovisual works in exactly the same way and get some of the same benefits that we get uh, from IIIF, but for our AV resources. Um, for example, being able to annotate, translate, transcribe content, uh, provide access restriction, provide search through the content, all through one standard way so we can reuse our tools and workflows um, and give a kind of common user interface. Uh, so at the British Library, uh, we kind of gathered uh, a bunch of people from around the world in a room the complete opposite of this uh, with no windows uh, or air conditioning uh, and kind of thought in early 2016 uh, you know is there scope for expanding this and we all agreed that the answer was yes so we then went on to kind of pursue how that might look so uh, very very briefly the IIIF presentation API is the most important one and the one I'm going to focus on today and that's really about uh, creating structure and describing works um, and so basically, collection and manifest are just units of distribution, uh, a bit like a Matroska container. Uh, a canvas is like an abstract space, so somewhere that's got a width and a height, more or less, and a duration. Uh, you just annotate content onto that, and range can describe kind of further structure, like chapters in a, in a DVD or something. Um, you don't really need to know the details of the model, but that's there for reference. Um, so this is what a, a canvas is. It's something that's got a, a, an abstract space, and it has uh, a width and a height, but that's really just to set an aspect ratio so that you can annotate your content onto it. Uh, so we can annotate images onto there uh, pretty easily, and of course we can annotate text uh, and other things at different positions, and these are using kind of uh, standard uh, W3C uh, open annotations and fragment selectors so that you can you know, position these correctly within the space. But we can also do exactly the same thing now with uh, time-based media. So a uh, canvas can have a duration, an optional duration. Uh, so if you've got audio-only content, for example, you can do that without a width and a height, and you won't get anything displayed, but you will get your audio played back. Um, and that's, I want to say that's the crux of the last three years' worth of work, but that's kind of the, the, the end goal, uh, end result. Uh, and it means that we can now kind of implement the really simple use cases, which are I have some audio video that I would like to play on the internet, and we can, you know, it's exactly as difficult as it is with images, but also we can do some really complex things, like not quite, but almost re-implement the uh, FFmpeg concat demuxer, but kind of on the fly, uh, which is really nice. So I'd just like to briefly then diverge to talk about the Universal Viewer. Uh, so the Universal Viewer is a, an open source uh, uh, viewing application that's IIIF compatible. Uh, it's one that has a pretty great set of features. Uh, I mean. Being able to zoom into, deep zoom into images isn't as relevant, but being able to provide YouTube style embedding, uh, create your own theme, configure it, um, support other document formats, as well as implement kind of other IIIF APIs like search and authentication, uh, and it being fully internationalized are all pretty good things. 
Um, and it's a project that's been uh, it's contributed to from a bunch of great organizations, not, not just the British Library, um, uh, across the world, and a, a really great group of, of contributors there. Uh, and and I'm, I'm there, uh, which is nice. Um, but it's also uh, now run as a community project through uh, Open Collective. So it has like a, an actual budget and people can donate money to it and we can use that money to kind of prioritize uh, community-based fixes. So uh, traditionally in the past, it's been, well, the British Library would like to do this, so we'll spend some time and money doing this and we'll drag it in one direction, but we're trying to kind of work more as a, a community around this so we've got a, a common direction and everybody's kind of more happy with it. So uh, this is Ed Silverton. Uh, he's the lead developer of the Universal Viewer, um, but he's also written a, a really helpful tool uh, that helps you kind of build IIIF uh, output, basically. Uh, and I thought what I'd do is instead of kind of talk and show some pictures, uh, I'd kind of walk through a workflow for how you guys could get started showing your IIIF, uh, your content in IIIF today, hopefully. Uh, so this is the tool. Uh, it's called Build IIIF, but Ed tells me you can just pronounce it BIF, uh, which is fine. Uh, and so it's just a command line application that will, uh, you make a folder structure, stick your MP4 or whatever in there, run your command line, and uh, you get some output. So I thought I'd go through a few really simple uh, scenarios. So the simplest one is that I've got a video and I don't care about any copyright or repercussions or anything. I'm just going to make it available on the internet and this should be fine. Or maybe I'm just going to make it available within my institution. Uh, so hopefully this is readable, but if not, um, basically it's just a directory. Uh, you can optionally include some metadata to be displayed alongside it. Uh, you need to create a directory with an underscore and put your MP4 file in there. And again, you can add some additional metadata if you really want. Run the tool. And then we should get, here we go. We get some IIIF presentation API output. Uh, great. So what does that look like? Uh, well, that depends. Is this going to play? Let's find out. Yes. No. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Not sure who that will have gone to. Maybe, maybe Dave. Oh, it went to me. Okay. Go to that. That's. Yes. Well, that's frustrating. Let's try that again. Glad I brought my phone with me. So you might have to imagine what that looks like, which is a real shame. Ooh. Oh, here we go, something's flashing. Right, okay. Oh, I'm getting several copies of it. So, uh, I wasn't sure exactly what, uh, what to demo, so I found this video on Twitter of uh, Nicolas Cage being introduced on a, uh, on a British talk show, which is going to slowly load. Uh, and this is being loaded into the Universal Viewer, um, but one of, the, one of the real benefits of IIIF is that you're not tied to any particular technology. Um, and so one of the reasons that we are so keen on it is that at the British Library we had something like 36 different ways of viewing uh, books and stuff that we digitized, which, uh, which is crazy. Now, I feel like this wants to play, but it just isn't. So that is a shame. Come on. Well, you're not getting the real benefit of uh, of that incredible video, but the slides are available and you can enjoy those uh, later on. Uh, so that would just be showing the simple video. Um, but what if you don't just want to show a simple video, right? So uh, I showed in that earlier slide we can annotate text onto a canvas as well. Well, we can do exactly the same thing with closed captions. So if you generate web VTT files, for example, uh, if you work uh, certainly in the States, then you need to make sure that you make captions available for any other video content you've got going. Uh, so uh, 
in fact, even more relevant now that you can't see the video, uh, you can at least get a, a gist of what was happening there. Uh, and this works in exactly the same way. We can put that in the same folder as the video that we've just seen, uh, and then we can rerun the tool, and it will automatically uh, stick them uh, in the end there, and we'll get played. And oddly, this looks like it might work. Or not. Hmm. Well, the demo gods are not being kind to me today, uh, but uh, again, slides are available and you can, you can kind of see yourself. Um, this isn't in the universal viewer, this is in a different independent uh, client uh, from Kanzaki Masahide in Japan, uh, which actually is slightly better at showing where the, the VTT uh, show up. Uh, so that's really nice. Um, but obviously this isn't any better than sticking your content on YouTube or Vimeo at the moment. In fact, YouTube will generate uh, captions for you, etc. cetera. So, so why is this any better? Uh, well, one of the things that you can do then is generate kind of more complex structure uh, for your files. And just full disclosure, this is not uh, available in the released version of the BIF tool, but will be very soon. Uh, and if you just bang some metadata in uh, like this using this fragment selector here, so uh, this is in seconds, so from between, say, 102 seconds, uh, we want to show this content, uh, you can then create kind of a, a more complex uh, structure. So here I've done exactly that, and I've created a, I've taken another Nicolas Cage video, uh, and we've kind of uh, created another folder and, and run it and stuck them together. Uh, and this, you kind of end up here with, um, uh, what I've chosen to do in this instance is to create one long video here that's got both of those videos tied together. So a bit like the FFmpeg Concat uh, demuxer. And uh, if it would play, uh, we could enjoy uh, Nicolas Cage showing up in something else entirely. Um, but you can have independent metadata displayed in each of these. It's a bit like, a, like chapters in a book um, or tracks on a CD or, or whatever. Uh, you flick between them by clicking on these two parts here and you can scrub through the entire timeline. Or you can choose to not do that and just have them as like a playlist style. So, and again, they don't have to play in their entirety. You could, if you were some kind of masochist, splice in a second from each one, uh, interlaced, uh, and go really crazy with it. Uh, and you can what, do what I call go full BL, uh, which is where we kind of take things to the extreme. So this is a real example from us where we've digitized uh, an archival uh, cassette, uh, which has got recordings over both sides. Uh, and we've tried to color in here where uh, that kind of logical structure sits. So we've got programs that start and can carry on, obviously. We've got uh, subsections of those uh, radio broadcasts where there's a song performance, so uh, there's a touches by the proclaimers. Uh, we've got stuff that carries on from the end of side one and carries on to the beginning of side two. Um, and you know, all of that, all different programs, all with complex different metadata requirements than display requirements, etc. But IIIF, and uh, again, full disclosure, not using the BIF tool, but IIIF allows us to kind of generate this table of contents uh, in the universal viewer, uh, and we're able to navigate between them. And because we're able to kind of construct this uh, concurrent virtual timeline, uh, the, which one is it? Saturday Review Program, which starts at the end of side one and carries on until side two, can be listened to in its entirety without the end user having to understand the archival nature of how this was put together. Um, although you can still choose to listen to side one and side two independently. So basically, you can listen to it as a logical unit, or you can listen to it as it existed on the tape, uh, if you've got the kind of time or metadata to, to sit and construct all of that. Uh, and, and this is the example from, from, from one of our manifests here, so that's uh, showing you where there's a touch fits in. Uh, and here we're saying we're, we're kind of targeting, we're annotating the, the last part of file number one and the first part of file number two onto the same canvas timeline. Uh, and that's what makes up this Saturday review program. Um, but obviously, uh, we recognize that, especially, especially with audio video content, rights restrictions and licensing are more of a thing than they are perhaps with, say, medieval manuscripts. Um, and IIIF has an answer for that. And we've got a IIIF authentication API. Uh, which is a kind of complex uh, set of uh, rules to do with kind of what HTTP status codes you should give and what kind of responses you should give in your service documents and so on. Uh, that's not that important, but I can illustrate it instead with pictures of Ed and somebody else. Uh, so the gist is, uh, can I see this content? And you can just say no. Uh, and that's absolutely fine. 
Um, but you can also choose to show uh, what we call like a, a degraded or an alternative version. So uh, thinking in terms of image terms, that might be we give like a, I don't know, a black and white version of a, instead of a full color uh, image of a famous painting. It might be that you want to give a slightly lower bitrate video version um, because you, you know, you, you know I'm not 100% sure on Canadian pop stars, but I think I would class Justin Bieber as a degraded Drake. Um, uh, so, uh, but it also gives you the opportunity in that instance to resolve it somehow. So, uh, especially the Universal Viewer will kind of uh, pop up and show you that you, you are looking, it makes it clear that you are looking at the degraded version. It's not the thing that you were expecting to see, and you can choose to resolve that either by moving to Canada or logging in or whatever it happens to be, accepting some terms of service um, and asking again, then everything is fine. So uh, there's no kind of rules or requirements around what kind of authentication system you use. We just describe a workflow, and it therefore can integrate with whatever it is you use in your institution. Um, and there's uh, example uh, implementations from a bunch of people to help you, help you get started, but it's far too complicated to uh, go here. Um, but I would like to, uh, although this is going to be difficult without working video, uh, just demonstrate some of the other benefits uh, of why you might want to go down this road. So, Everything is just an annotation. Uh, it's uh, very powerful from that point of view. So you can take those WebVTT that we uh, saw earlier, uh, use a few lines of Python or, because that's very short, just do some cutting and pasting uh, and turning those into textual annotations in the W3C web annotation model, uh, which is, uh, allows them to be directly uh, individually referenced. Um, one of the benefits of that is that somebody can then link to or reference that particular uh, annotation. Perhaps somebody wants to transcri uh, translate sorry, your transcription, which is also uh, a benefit. Um, but you can then start annotating and linking other types of content together. So here is a, a demonstration which uh, won't work, but is a, a video of a performance of a uh, list and annotated onto that same uh, Canvas timeline is uh, some music notation, some symbolic music notation in uh, MEI, the Music Encoding Initiative. And each measure is annotated on at a specific time. And then that's rendered as a, a engraving here in SVG. And you can use the uh, measures to navigate around the timeline. So uh, unfortunately, can't demonstrate it, but you would you know, kind of click here, and we jump to here, and it gets highlighted as you go through. So, What's really quite cool about that is that you don't have to have uh, the video of the performance and uh, the, the uh, symbolic music notation. You just need to have one of them and maybe some patience. Uh, so you can make your content available this way. Somebody else can bring it together with the, uh, with the notation. That's quite nice. Similarly, if you've got, say, half of a recording of something and somebody else has the other half, bringing those together is always uh, nice to do and it means nobody has to go anywhere. Uh, also great. A very big benefit for researchers who want to kind of view uh, content which you may not have in its entirety and don't want to have to travel around the world uh, just to see it. Uh, and here's another example. This was from a, uh, uh, a workshop at the BBC uh, a while ago. This is actually the German Parliamentary Archive. Uh, uh, Joscha Jaeger, uh, who some of you may know, uh, worked on a project to kind of make all of this available uh, on the internet. And during that workshop, a few of us kind of worked through how we make that into IIIF. So uh, this again is fully, fully IIIF. Um, these are all textual annotations down the side that scroll with the, the video as it plays through. Uh, and you can use those for navigation. Uh, and you can see this guy in the bow tie get really uh, excited about something not being right, um, which, which is good. Um, and so the, the idea here, the, this interface obviously is not new, but the interoperability acts, uh, aspect is quite good. Um, and so we can take this and we can share it, we could translate it if we want, or maybe we could uh, mash it up with something that would make it look funnier than it already does. Uh, and again, just canvases and, uh, and just annotations all the way down. Uh, and I'd just like to make a shout out for some ongoing work in this area. So the University of Texas and Brumfield Labs have just been awarded uh, a grant to work on uh, annotation tools for AV content that's available in IIIF. So if you want to make your content available in IIIF, uh, pretty soon there'll be some tools to work with that natively to provide, say, transcription and translation and other annotation uh, type aspects, which is pretty exciting. So, uh, since this has gone slower because the uh, 
video would not play. Uh, I hope that is at least slightly exciting and you should get, definitely get involved. Join our discussion groups, uh, join the IIIF Slack where there's a lot of constant discussion, you can get help. Um, join our bi-weekly community calls where we kind of show demos and talk through exciting things that are happening in, in IIIF, although I should warn you that's probably going to be a bit quiet over the upcoming holiday period. Uh, and in the UV2, please join the Slack, uh, think about sponsoring the project if you're flush with cash. Uh, or if you'd just like to get involved, uh, you don't need to be a developer to get involved, please just log bugs or make suggestions or join in in some way. Thank you. And we're going to take some questions. Yes. Hi, uh, Ashley Bluer, Artifactual Systems. Um, I think IIIF is a great initiative and it has a lot of wide adoption in the community and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your model for consensus building and governance within a community-based project and how that has been so successful? Sure. Um, so uh, IIIF uh, s did not start as a necessarily fully open uh, group of people. So it was started by a bunch of libraries and archives and museums who got together and started building consensus among themselves. And it's transitioned to being a fully transparent uh, community-driven group now. Um, so one of the, uh, one of the, we borrow some of the uh, governance structures from the W3C, um, so, and, and uh, ITEF as well. Um, so we, we believe in constructive discussion. Uh, we have a kind of a group of uh, editors who are permanent editors, but now there's a technical review committee, uh, which is made up of people um, like myself, uh, who are represent, uh, representatives of other institutions, and there's some people who are just from the community who get elected uh, onto there as well to help kind of drive things in the in the correct direction. Um, I'll probably talk about this a little bit in the the panel session next, but actually, uh, we have kind of two face-to-face -face meetings every year. One of them is like a conference style, and one of them is a, a working group, uh, and it's really the working group where people get together and kind of work through uh, direction and, and discussion about how things should move forward. If that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Steve? In your example uh, video, uh, you mentioned uh, an MP4, and in the end, it turned out to be a WebM you are trying to play. Ah. Is it always turned into WebM? No, that was just me recording the tab from Chrome uh, badly, yes. So, uh, sorry, I should have mentioned that obviously when you're displaying video on the web, you've got to make sure that you target whatever the lowest common denominator is. The universal viewer itself obviously uh, can take advantage of the whatever uh, video codec support your browser has, but also supports uh, HLS and MPEG Dash uh, if you're making stuff available in that way. Any other questions? Yes. Hi, I'm Peter Bobestinger, AVRD. Um, very interesting, and I'm currently involved in a project where I need this. And the question would be, is it possible to um, have time-based annotations that actually have like a metadata syntax in terms of like I want to not just have a text at a time, mm -hmm. but really have a schema defined for scientific research? Yes. Yes. So. Um, Yes, you can annotate anything you like. So you can annotate data uh, on there. Um, and the schema then is, is up to you how, you how you enforce that. So if you open this in another application which does not understand that schema, then obviously we understand that it probably will ignore them, those annotations, or possibly, because it may not understand exactly what this schema means. So would it be like, um, like I have a text? <laughs> and I have the, the schema blob, mm -hmm. I just say like an XML blob or whatever, yep. and if it doesn't understand it, it, could it fall back to the plain text? Or yes. could it just hijack the plain text field? Uh, yeah, that would be sensible. It would depend exactly on how the, how the viewing application works, but yeah, I think falling back to the, the thing it can play is pretty common. May I pick your brain afterwards? Absolutely. Thank you very yeah. much.